All right, you asked for it, you left comments in all of my architecture videos, so we're gonna talk about architecture yet again. That's right, we're talking about MVVMS. That's right, it's my architecture pattern that I've used for the past 15 years from my very first job all the way into the most recent app that I've deployed into the App Store. I'm gonna break down exactly what MVVMS is and why I think it's so important and help answer your questions along the way. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back with another video, this time talking about architecture because you had many, many, many questions. I just put out a video not too long ago about MVVM, Model View View Model Architecture, which is all about architecting code, specifically for doing data binding, and it works really nice with things like XAML UI. So if you're doing things with .NET MAUI or UWP or WinUI 3 or Avalonia or uh, Uno or any of these platforms, it's gonna work super duper great because it has two-way data binding built in. We talked a lot about what it looks like to put your code just in the code behind, and then what it means to put your code in an MVVM architecture pattern that makes your code testable and makes your code decoupled. And additionally, it makes it really nice to do that cool data binding back and forth. Now, many of you had questions though. Some people said, what about the model? And then some other people said, what about the view model? And then other people said, what about the services? Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people had questions like, how smart should things be? Should the model be smart? Should the view model be smart? Should the services be smart? Like what should actually happen here? And it's all good questions to be honest with you. And I'm gonna break down what my specific architecture pattern is that I've used for the last 15 years. I started my career off working at Canon, the camera company, but I worked on big printers like this one here uh, and different uh, flow job management software. Uh, over there and everything was interface based. We had interfaces for everything under the sun. And I thought that was really great uh, because it makes things really decoupled and really testable. But while I like interfaces, I don't like to go interface overload, to be honest with you. I like just some interfaces when necessary. Now, MVVMS, the S standing for services, is the most important part of my architecture pattern that I use. I didn't create it, I didn't invent it. I just added an S to the end of MVVM and that's my services. So I think the best part of demoing what this means and why I use it personally and why I think that you should look at this way of decoupling certain pieces of functionality uh, away from other parts of your application uh, as much or as little as you need to um, is in actually the monkey finder application for my .NET MAUI workshop. Uh, and this is a app that I've built over the years and turned into a .NET MAUI workshop. And over 100,000 people have watched my video, which I put up right over there. Uh, that's four hours long walking through the application. But this architecture pattern and MVVMS and using your services, like I said, I didn't invent it. You can use it in any application type uh, that you're using. So if you're doing WPF or things like that, you're good to go. But let's go ahead and get into it. All right, the very first thing we're gonna see is the monkey finder application. This application is relatively simple. You say get monkeys, it goes off to an internet service provider, does a RESTful service call or reads from a file, this monkey data, and then you can tap on a monkey and navigates to said monkey. And then you can also find closest using geolocation. You can go ahead and open on the map and it opens it there. Now let's head into Visual Studio 2022 and take a look. Now, the first thing that I wanna talk about is just the XAML here. So again, this is using straight MVVM architecture pattern. We have my data type here, which is giving just some IntelliSense to the um, user interface and also doing compiled bindings. So if I do a typo or mess something up, it'll let me know. I have uh, some standard uh, commands here. So when I pull the refresh, uh, that's gonna go ahead and hit the get monkeys command. There is the is refreshing. There's a collection view with monkeys as the item source. And then we simply bind up a whole bunch of different things like tap gesture recognizers, uh, image, uh, different labels inside of here with that monkey information. So nothing too crazy. And here we go. We have buttons, we have activity indicators, straight MVVM. Now, if we pull out my solution and I zoom in over here, we can see that I have M, V, VM, and services. 
Okay, so the services unfortunately alphabetically doesn't align with exactly how I would like it, but I do this here. Now I also do view instead of views instead of view models because I actually like it to say model view view model. I'm just uh, I don't know that's just me. I, I just can't help myself. Uh, I guess I could do something instead in front of services to make it go to the bottom. Uh, but you know even there's other folders in between it. Now the first question many people asked was, what about your models, James? You forgot about talking about models in MVVM. Okay, well I kind of did, but models should be very primitive in my personal opinion. You can actually look at my monkey class here. The monkey class doesn't know anything about anything really. Uh, in general, I think that these are simple uh, objects that are just used temporarily to hold data. They really shouldn't know too much about anything. Maybe you override uh, some comparison methods, you override some two string methods, but in an ideal world, in my personal opinion, they shouldn't do anything. Uh, one caveat to that, I would say is if you are doing, um, some certain things, they, they may, for example, hold some data such as, you know, I want to do a display name, or I want to give you the first letter, um, you know, and, and those might be things that aren't in the database or they might not be inside of. Um, the um, a JSON feed that's coming in. But in general, I think that these should be very, very simple. And if you look at a lot of my applications that are on my GitHub, you're going to see that this is how I structure almost all my applications and my data objects. They shouldn't be computing stuff. They shouldn't be doing very much. They should just be sitting there. They're models. They're just around, not doing much at all. Uh, they may, for example, be have a database object type, or you might decide that that database object type is separate from your model based if uh, you're sharing that database model across apps. Now, when it comes to view models, those also should be relatively not that intelligent, I think, in my personal opinion. I would say that this here is an example of something that's in the middle of MVVMS, uh, in my personal opinion. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the view models, I don't really think they should know too much of where the data is coming from. They shouldn't be querying a service. They shouldn't be querying a database. They really shouldn't be doing much. So this is my base example here inside of my view model. And um, what we can see in the constructor is it takes in three different uh, pieces of information, a monkey service, eye connectivity, and eye geolocation. Now, some may argue here that I might have my own connectivity service and my own geolocation service that take in these interfaces. But I do think that in general here, uh, this is a pretty decent practice based on what those interfaces are giving you. If you do have uh, and do need to do a lot of computation around connectivity or geolocation, you might put those in their own separate class and their own separate service. So if we look specifically at the get monkeys command, this is a great example here. The first thing I do is I use that interface and I check if there's connectivity. And here I just, you know, check if it's the internet does not equal internet and pop up a display. Again, this could be a its own service, right? It could be, uh, you know, await connectivity dot check internet, for example. And we remove this decoupling of, of checking for connectivity here because we might want to reuse that logic later on. Depends how advanced your app is. But the most important about the actual services, and when I look at a service, I think about making a RESTful service call, hitting a database, making an authentication service, things like that. We simply say monkey service, get monkeys. Notice here that the view model is not tapping into a database. It's not tapping into a RESTful service call. It's not tapping in to reading information from a file and deserializing it because we want to decouple that completely to make that component really testable and reusable across different parts of the application. The only thing that the view model really cares about is that list of monkeys that it's going to data bind up and specifically any properties that it's going to also data bind up to see if it's refreshing or it is busy. And that's kind of it. Down here, we can see this is a good example of maybe this should have been, <laughs> you know, a, a service, a geolocation service where we're getting last known location or getting the location async. So those are kind of a mixed bag where this is like MVVMS light in a way, if I was to do it that way. But if we look at the service and introducing this pattern, there is one service inside of here, which is the monkey service. Now, what I like about this monkey service 
is that we're able to put it behind an interface if we wanted to, totally up to you. If you want that to be completely, completely decoupled and you want it to be an interface, you can do that like my iGeo location and iConnectivity that's coming in from .NET MAUI. But here, what we're going to note is that the monkey service itself is going to be in charge of the HTTP client. If this was a database for the monkeys, it would be in charge of accessing that database. Uh, this could be the database for the entire app or maybe just for the monkeys. It's up to you on that granularity level and that connection that you have. Here, this is the code that we do not want into our view models. I think that view models should be light to medium, so they shouldn't be making RESTful service calls. They shouldn't be handling status codes. They shouldn't be deserializing information, whether it's from the internet or if it's from a JSON file or from a database. Now, what's nice about this is that at any point I can come in, I could easily test this application and this logic, and then my view model over here knows nothing about it. If I want to now add another method called get monkey and pass an ID and do other things like that, it's completely removed, completely detached 100%. So we look at the model, super duper simple, the lightest of lightest weight, really knows nothing about anything. View models here, ideally, as we can see coming in from the constructor, which is using the built-in dependency injection, um, this is going to be very, very minimal. It doesn't know about the connectivity. It doesn't know about the geolocation. It doesn't know about the monkey service. It just knows what it can call on it, what's being exposed. And then we have the service, the thing that's doing the bulk of the work that is independent from the user interface and independent from the state of the user interface completely. So I think that these are great examples of, like I said, databases, reading from file, making RESTful service calls, and those can be as granular or non-granular as you want inside of your application. And the thing that I love about this is that it all works very, very nice with the built-in dependency injection service, especially if you're using, let's say, in .NET MAUI, for example, um, you're using uh, shell that'll be injected into the pages, into the view models, into the services across the board. But there we go. That is my MVVM S architecture pattern. What do you think? Do you have more questions? Did I not answer anything? Do I need to make another video on architecture? Let me know in the comments below. I do read all of them. I try to answer as many of I, as many as I can below uh, down there. Of course, I really appreciate everyone's been hanging out on the channel, leaving comments, leaving those likes, and of course, subscribing and tapping that notification bell so you get subscribed and you get notifications every single time I put out a video. You can not hit that notification bell and it'll just come up in your subscriptions feed. I do that for some channels based on what you want, but I put out videos almost every single week here on my YouTube and I also live stream. So those notifications do help there as well. Let me know if you have any more architecture patterns. I will continue to do MVVM videos until the day I die, I think, uh, because I love it or until something replaces it. Uh, but for me, I love it and I love my architecture pattern. As I said, I've used it in almost every single application that I've ever built. You can take a look, especially at my uh, let's, my other applications on my GitHub. The Island Tracker application is a great example. Um, I think also the podcast application, also very similar. And that one even architects out um, more of those individual services. Uh, so you can see that there. Now, this has just been one in my many, many series of MVVM and architecture videos. I'll put links below to all the other videos and, of course, that four hour long video all about getting started and building your first applications with .NET MAUI. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If I did, if you did, thumbs up it. Super helps out. It goes into that YouTube algorithm of goodness. Really appreciate it. I hope you have the most amazing day in your entire life. If you have any questions, let me know below. Until next time, thanks for watching.